Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, I'm always up when I see stories about fast food, because uh, I kind of I like it, I'm kind oh, of a fan. I know, it's so good. I know, right? Why is it that everything that is so good is so bad for you? I don't know. It's really not fair. I think it's just because we live in a broken world. I know. I know. I don't know <laughs> because why let's, they did this. I mean, you go to McDonald's, those chicken nuggets and mm-hmm. those fries. And I'm on day two of smoothies. Uh, blah. Uh, and they're good. They're really tasty. Does it taste like a McGriddle? No, nothing does. <laughs> well. Like, like that is science and culinary arts combined for the perfect concoction of goodness. Are you um, regretting your decision? Ah, uh, yes and no. because uh, I don't think it's going to matter ultimately. Like uh, that. Yeah, I think that's really thanks, Gavin. <laughs> uh, that's really what I come down to, and that's what that's the hardest part of like when you're trying to lose weight or whatever. It's when you are like, okay, is this one decision really going to make or break me? Is it going to matter? And when you but then when you go, okay, that one isn't. But then when you string that with five other bad decisions, mm-hmm. that's when you get hosed, you know? Mm-hmm. And so if you, so it's not about the one drinking the one smoothie per se. It's about staying in that so that you don't necessarily make the decision to go to Duncan, which I'd really like to do tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to fight it this whole week. And then. I don't know. Gavin, are you feeling Duncan tomorrow? Mm-hmm. I'm feeling Chick fil A and Ooh, Duncan. Yes. <laughs> Coffee and chicken. Yes. I'm trying. Yes. Well, maybe uh, you guys can just uh, swing by Burger King, too, and throw in this. Uh, you have to go to Thailand, though. Uh, it's only in Thailand right now, but it's a Whopper without meat. Okay, so now they don't have the... So it's vegan. Well, no, it's... Well, yes. I, no, it's not. Don't it's, they it's, already have the Impossible Whopper? They do. Yeah, that's fake burger. Um, but this is worse. This is the Whopper without meat, lettuce, tomatoes, condiments, onions, anything. All it has is 20 slices of cheese. Oh, I've seen a picture Have of you this. seen that? Yeah. It's like a grilled cheese. But like uh, yeah, not? but like a lot of it. Like it's so that is too Why much cheese 20? for any human. Well, because I you I mean, because they're still charging a bunch of money for it. Ten dollars uh, is what they're charging for that <laughs> for in just, Thailand. A tip for twenty slices. Weird. Tip, yeah. 20, twenty slices, slices of, cheese of cheese between and two, two slices buns. of cheese bread. Is expensive yeah. these days, but that's ridiculous. That's, yeah, that's weird. Lunacy. Uh is it selling? Uh, it will at first because it's one of those funny things that people do. Remember that breakfast sandwich they had that was like fifteen hundred calories or something like that? Do you remember that? Mm-mm. Yeah, there was some crazy thing, and and all the doctors were like, "It's gonna kill people." You know, <laughs> it's like, no, people are gonna kill people. Do you remember we did a uh, a bit on this not that long ago? But there was a man. I think he was in his sixties, and he decided to eat. McDonald's, uh, McDonald's like every day. No, it was like for years. Yes. And he worked at a McDonald's. Yes. And it seems like he had something, like a Big Mac, every day. Yeah. And he was doing great. Yeah. You I just I, don't know. Hits everybody differently. You Again, know? it's McDonald's as a, an individual choice for lunch or dinner or breakfast is not the bad decision. It's right. not the wrong decision. Right. It's, if you went and had like three Big Macs a day right. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, then yeah, that's probably not good. Yeah, and if you went to McDonald's, you know, and then you went to Pizza Hut, and then you uh, for breakfast had had uh, you know Dunkin', and so like you just repeat that stuff every day, mm-hmm. then that's yeah, that's definitely where Builds it gets up. problematic. So I'm hoping, I, I'm just hoping to just to drop, drop five. You know, that's all. That's all. It, all I want five. So five. you want to drop five? Let's drop five, and then what do you want to? forever keep it off or are you yes. going to come back from no, you I'm... know vacation and it's like you know what breakfast twice a week from probably McDonald's. Yeah. yeah i think you guys know me well enough to yeah. know that this isn't going to last this is just... i didn't assume but i know thank you your thing is is that you don't you don't fluctuate from like 20 to 40 pounds you only really fluctuate between oh uh, yeah five t- and ten, ten pound yeah it's not too yeah. bad yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't put on a ton of weight. I just, I, do, I know when I don't feel good. Yes. Like it, that, that's a lot of it. Like I haven't weighed myself in a while. I know when I just don't feel good, or when I get winded going upstairs. Yep. Like my my cardio is taking a huge hit because uh, I'm not biking anymore, mm-hmm. like really, and so I got to get back on that. Um, but yeah, or like if I don't like how my shirts fit. I mean, like women know that too. Like, oh, I don't like how my jeans fit or whatever. It's like that's like like my friend Molly. She never gets on a scale. She goes completely by like how her clothes fit. Mm-hmm. And so if she doesn't like the way her clothes fit, she's like, oh, I've put on a few more pounds. I need to take these off. That might be. 
that might be a healthy way to do it. Yeah, I think. I mean, I know a lot of people vilify the scale, but it's kind of like we also vilify a score in kids' sports. You know, like mm-hmm. oh, we can't do that because well, how do you know? How mm-hmm. do you know something? That's a good barometer. Now, when you're a slave to it and you make bad decisions based on that, I, again, that's what it all comes back down to: is making good decisions. If you look at the number, and so you see that, and then you go, okay, now I'm going to you know starve myself mm-hmm. to get this mm-hmm. number down. That's a bad decision. And then that doesn't matter if, if you looked at it or you put your clothes on and you saw your self-image and went, I hate the way I look. I'm going to starve myself to get to where I look better. That's a bad decision regardless of the metric that you are using. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think that that's the thing. A lot of times we don't, we don't look at that part of the equation uh we we you know vilify the scale but there's especially in weight loss there's a whole lot more going on in people's heads that's why that noom thing was so big because for a while it was like trying to tell people how to change your relationship with food Mm -hmm. and to change the psychology Mm -hmm. of eating and it's still pretty big yeah, I, I, it, it had its payday. I think it's kind of pulled back because they actually knew. They actually, I think, partnered with doctors to do Ozempic, uh, where you could take a shot and lose weight uh, with that diabetes drug. I think they started doing that too. You're like, oh, that is such a, a dangerous message, you know? From from hey, change your mentality. You know what? Just uh, just get a shot. We'll be fine. <laughs> um, but my buddy had done Noom, and 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 I get the mentality of it because if you stop looking at food as the celebration that you have over the mundane, but you use it as that excuse to celebrate, or you look at it as more than just fueling your body. If you like look at it as like ultimate enjoyment and stuff like that, I get why that's a really good thing to train your mind. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. We'll we'll see how this shakes out. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. We'll see. Lady Rock, what do you got? Well, quiet quitting. It was a trend. It was started by this Gen Z TikToker. Pretty much what quiet quitting is, is saying, like, you are more than your job. So don't give it your all. Because older generations, (sighs) they give it their all. They will die at their desk. That's right. And then you think, well, what did they get from that? Yeah, they're going to go to heaven and (laughs) God's going to go, man, thank you. Thank you for working hard. Like, I made work. I created work from the very beginning. And for putting your family second. Yes, thank you for that. And your kids don't know who you are. But you know what? You had a great, strong work ethic. Yeah, and they're here anyway. I think think you've jumped to the farthest extreme of that. Just like the extreme on the other side is quiet quitting, I think you're jumping to the extreme of because you have a good work ethic, you instantly, that means you don't care about your family or you're an absentee father. I think you can have a good work ethic, but you need to have strong boundaries too. Mm, yes. I, I do agree with that. And, and, and everyone's boundaries are a little bit different mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to that. But right. work is something that kind of fulfills me, though, too. So it actually is it actually is a healthy thing for well, me. Well, this Gen Zer, he started the quiet uh, quitting trend. And some people were Did you explain it. what quiet quitting so is? So it's when you give the bare minimum at your job. You don't care too much about it. Um, Sounds terrible. Yeah, so you just show up and do the bare minimum. Like, that's the person everybody who has to work with hates because yeah. you just are annoying. And now I have to pick up your slack because you have a crud work ethic. Now I have to deal with you. Like, that's, I think that's one of the most disrespectful things you can do to the people that you work with. Well, I would like for him to explain. What he he's now going back on quiet oh, quitting the Gen Zer. I do like this. He Good. instead is saying that instead of doing quiet quitting, you should just quit your job yeah. altogether. Yes, this you don't is, want to work there. This is what he had to say. I just fully up and quit my job. My last work environment was not conducive to me at all. Oh. It just wasn't good for me mentally. Oh. And so being able to really reassess what matters to me was so instrumental in providing me with this general it's... lightness again in life. Oh, he got his lightness back. Living. He sounds like he's like him a on a beach life. on a oh. vacation. And he might have been. So but happy that he got his mainly, lightness back. Mainly, he went more into detail conducive. in the article and pretty much what he said was if you find yourself in a job where it's not giving you the zest for life oh, or it's no. not good for your mental <laughs> yes. health, I want that zest. then you should then you should just quit your job because he found that when he was doing the quiet quitting thing, right. he was doing the bare minimum and he was always finding himself scared that he was going to get caught. Right, because you're doing the wrong thing. And then he also said that 
he would question himself a lot on why are you wasting this time in your life working for a job that you don't really care about. I get so that. instead quit and find something that you are okay. passionate about. I do understand that. hundred percent. Like I would much rather someone quit than phone it in. Like I will never phone it in. I've been I've had days where I've been so mad about something that was handed down to me from management and and it has and happened you here. And to it's do happened it. here. Well it's happened here. And I <laughs> and I wanted to and I wanted to just come in and phone it in, not do a good show and just sulk, you know, but I never did. I, even on my maddest worst day in mainstream radio or here, I still came in and gave it hundred percent every day. And I can look in the mirror and know that I did that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I hear these things, it's like, okay, if you don't like your job, quit. The other option is find the joy in it and maybe see that there's a purpose to you being here and that you could do something with it. I'm going to go all spiritual here for a second. Um, Do we have the bed? (laughs) Oh, yeah. uh, We should always have the bed. (laughs) I have have a medical condition, all right? It's called caring too much and it's incurable! No, but I am going to go spiritual for a minute here because we as believers have a call to be the best at what we do. Now, regardless of if it's something we like or not, Mm -hmm. we should still be the best at it. Like that's that that speaks volumes of our faith. If you look at uh, Joseph, Joseph, like gets betrayed by his brothers, thrown in prison for a thing he didn't even do. He did the right thing and he ends up in prison. But even in prison, he still lived out his faith and still was making the most of his situation. It stunk. It was horrible. But then God elevated him beyond that, you know, and it's like you should, I always tell people like young people in in this business and other things, it's like you're always auditioning for your next job. People are watching you. And so have a good work ethic, even if it stinks, if it's a horrible job, it's things that aren't fun, that's okay. Be great at it because that's what's going to lead you to your next thing. And and so I do believe in, you know, the value of hard work. And that's one of the things. And if you don't want to do it, you just hand it off to somebody else. No, go somewhere else. Go leave. Get out. (laughs) You know, he also makes it sound like you just quit your job and you find the next great thing that you love. It's not that easy to find a a good job that pays pretty well and B, that you just like love well, doing, and yeah, and to go straight into a job that you feel fulfilled. Right. At. Yeah. Like when you're just starting out, like that's not going to happen. You have to slowly work your way up, and, and that that's takes sometimes time. where you find fulfillment yeah. too. It's like by doing things you don't like shows you what you do like, you mm-hmm. know. And 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 so like my daughter, she's not in a place that she likes her job right now, you know. And this is advice I'm giving to her. It's like okay, but be great at it. Own it. Be the best at it because you never know what doing that is going to do for mm-hmm. you and take you to the next level. Now, if he hates his job and goes, okay, this is it's not good for my mental health, uh, fine. Like, I, I understand that. Go get another job. But don't quit, then draw unemployment, and then do all these other things. Like, like, go move back home and expect someone else to you know support you. It's like, man up, take care of your own. And if he's doing that, because I can't make that judgment, great. If he's self-sufficient and he's not relying on the government to you know, pay his bills for him, and he's you know doing his own thing and finding his own path. That's fine, but it's like the people that drive me nuts are the ones that like leech off of society and the other people that are working hard. You know, yeah. And so I don't know if he's found a job or if he's at the beach or if he's just living his best life. Just live my best life here on YouTube and on the TikTok. Maybe he just wants to be an influencer. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, thanks for the roses. Appreciate that. He lost <laughs> his trendiness when quiet quitting. Like we, you know, fell out of the scape, and then for he's sure. like, you know what? I, I gotta get back in there somehow. And that was only for a good two weeks or yeah. a month or whatever. The quiet quitting thing was so short. I don't think that's gonna ever be a trendy thing. No. Here's the here's the thing. I do feel bad for people that get that. T- it's like it's like having it's like being um, a music artist and you have a hit right out of the gate. Like Katie Nicole, she's young, has a hit right out of the gate. Like, oh wow, good job. Now, luckily for her, she followed it up with a second song that was really good too. Mm-hmm. That doesn't always happen what happens a lot of people you know you have the one hit wonders you have that one song and then you spend the rest of your life and your career trying to get that back and you don't that i in my book is far more frustrating than never having it Mm -hmm. and so for these inner influencers they get their 15 minutes and they have a run and they've made a little bit of money but then that's going away 
the internet is fickle. People are fickle. You had one thing. You know, you mm-hmm. didn't build a life and a repertoire of content. You had one thing. Well, and I know this is going to sound funny, but it is true. Um, I followed this guy on TikTok that his cat was the main thing. That, yeah. Why he got so many likes. Because Did the cat died? Yes. Oh, no, really? The cat and then died. he's done. So, yeah. And he, he now he doesn't have any content yeah. anymore. And so... When you think about it that way, it's like all your content was based on a cat yeah. that passed away, and now what do you do? It's like when you start a company, and why companies have so many lines of their stuff, because you start this one thing, then people are like, oh, this is great, I have to have this. And then they're like, yeah, I don't really like that anymore. And if you have nothing else, well, your company's done. So the mm-hmm. companies that uh, di- um, diversify and have another line of shoes or another line of sportswear or whatever the, the thing you're selling is, you know, they make it. But influencers, man, like they, they hit their stride with one thing. And that's it. That is all you got, you know. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times too, the the weird thing with influencers is once they start making money, they have to then do more of that to keep making money. And so you see all the ads on TikTok that l- they pretend to be content, but you know, here's an ad, and mm-hmm. people then get burnt out on that, and they shelve you for the next thing that's not doing the ads, the next person that's on their way up before they're having to do the ads to make their bank. Mm-hmm. And so then you just keep jumping from influencer to influencer, and these people just go, whew. So you're gonna, we're going to see a whole generation of kids that like had something for a minute and then lost it. And I think they are going to be so unbelievably sad and unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. I think uh, kids are getting this. like trained to like seek the moment versus seek the like, you know, the the drawn out yeah. goals and plans of living a fulfilled life versus just a great moment. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Lady Rock. Mm-hmm. Do you have some birthdays for me? I do. Oh, good. Uh, we have two. Dana, Whoa, Dana. Uh, celebrated a birthday yesterday. Oh, no. Her mom, Lydia. Yeah, Lydia. Noodles. What? She put that in quotation noodles. Nice. noodles. So maybe she calls her mom noodles. Mama noodles. Yeah, mama noodles. <laughs> like ramen noodles. <laughs> That's cute. Mama uh, she said, happy birthday. She's super fun, loves to talk, and loves her family. She's her mom's best birthday present. Oh. Ah, cute. Uh, oh, then Frank wants to wish Genesis, uh, That's a good name. his daughter, a happy birthday, saying she is a longtime loyal potty, celebrating her 20th birthday. Nice. She's smart, hardworking, driven, and funny, loves God and her family very much. Birthday Song, please. That's oh. a girl that would never quiet quit, and that's why you get the birthday song. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, 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 they came out and we were having dinner with some friends and there was a family right behind us and they come out and the the server's like, hey, we have a birthday. Mm. And I'm like, please let it be the same song. Please let it be the same song. And it was. And I jumped in. I'm like, nice. happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. Or, or, from the Chili's crew. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey. They must love doing that. Yeah. I know. Well, they hated it. And there was only three uh-huh. of them. And I felt bad. I'm like, okay, I got to I gotta help. Wow, that so must have been really embarrassing for those that were eating with with you. me. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Like <laughs> it was, it was the right thing to do for that kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we do have a question. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, what story from your younger years always makes you cringe? Mm. Oh wow! How many? Like things do? you did, or it says a story from your younger years. That makes you cringe, like that oh, one story. Oh, I, I know, I know mine. I know mine. You know one, like the one. I I know a couple. One is somebody made me cringe, and one is <laughs> I made myself cringe when I look back <laughs> at it, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, picture this: Wally finally gets invited to a party. Eighteen. Uh, like yeah. No, I was uh, I was driving, so I was sixteen, because um, I drove myself to this party, and oh, this is so bad. So bad. Um, okay, so I'm 16. I drive myself to this party, and I get I, I get invited. I'm really happy there. I didn't do a lot of parties. Uh, like I, I I wasn't the most popular what? kid. Yeah, it's weird, right? So I go. And I'm kind of counterculture to everybody else. Like by this time, I'm surfing, and I'm trying not to be like 
the the jocks and everything. And so I go to this party, and I had bought a, uh, a guitar. You know my Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat? Mm-hmm. Like, I have a nice one now that, yeah. I, that I can play. Uh-huh. And it, it's a nice custom guitar that I that my uh, in-laws bought me years ago. But before that guitar, I had another one that was a, a cheap one, like $120, that I bought, and I didn't even know how to play yet. Oh, but yes. you brought it anyway. But I brought the guitar to the uh, party, and I wore one fingerless glove. Yes, you did. Like Billy Idol. Uh, oh, no. Yes, and not, no, this is where it gets really cringe. Okay, right now you're cringing with me. Yeah. In a Bad. minute, you're going to cringe more, and I will probably cry oh, no. when I think about it. And so- I'm, I'm showing the guitar to people, you know, like like I know how to play it. And then like, oh, why don't you play something? I don't really feel like doing that right now. So then I put the guitar up. But I'm still wearing a fingerless glove. But it is not a leather studded fingerless Billy Idol glove. Bejeweled. Bejeweled. It's a mesh. Is it like Michael Jackson's glove? But No, no. It is a leather or it is a fingerless terry cloth tennis uh, racket <laughs> glove. <laughs> 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 so here I am. My eyes are starting to well oh, no. up because it's so humiliating. So we're watching like MTV, and you got Billy Idol eyes without a face, face, and he's doing the thing with his fist. And here's me with my racquetball no. glove. It literally racket is a ball. racquetball glove made of terry cloth, and I'm lip syncing to eyes without a face, face with the glove, thinking I was so cool. It you was like stood up in the middle yes, of the party and sang along yes, really loud. It was. It, 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 thinking back on it right I swear to you my <laughs> eyes are watering it is so humiliating <laughs> to think of I was doing that and then I remember just leaving like oh. I didn't say goodbye to anybody really I, so oh. you knew immediately after you had done it that was that was bad did you get the I, guitar and go yeah 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 I'd already put that up uh, but like I yeah because I know like I'm pretty good at knowing like on on the air when a bit works and doesn't like if it mm-hmm. works I know it. if it doesn't work well, that was horrible we're never doing that again um and even back then, I at least had that skill. I went, that didn't work, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I literally just slunk out of this place oh, as qu- as quietly as I could. Really, it was it was so humiliating. I do feel it? Like I, do I feel yes, it. you feel your I secondhand it embarrassment. Was there I hate a girl it for there you. that you were trying? Of to... Of course, there was a girl oh. I was trying to impress. And let me tell you, side note to this story, it might sound weird. It didn't work. No, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fingerless. Gloves yeah. don't work. Okay, yeah. so what was the story about the person that made you cringe? Oh, the girl that uh, broke up with me when she came back from college uh, because I didn't look like the guys oh, that, that she should date. Sense. Yeah, oh. yeah, Melissa. Thanks. Oh, that's that cringy. <laughs> yeah, that one. That one. That one hurt. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not as great of a story, but still. Yeah, stinks. that's yeah, a lot oh. of sting in my past. I would yeah, love I to have it. like a photo. Of that night where you're standing up there oh, with that you know tennis if, ball glove. If if I could, if, if we should have to use AI so I could describe it, and AI could do a photo of it, do a photo of Wally thinking he's Billy Idol wearing a racquetball glove. Man. Oh my goodness, we have to get an AI account for artwork. That is, that is rough. It would be so funny to do some of this stuff. Oh my glory. Oh, yeah, my eyes are still watering. <laughs> uh, anyone else want to share? No, Please? I think that was no, pretty good. That felt good enough to me. Yeah, that there was really good. There has to be something cringy. Girls are so cringy. Like, girls <laughs> do things and they, they cat out on each other and stuff. And, like, there mm-hmm. had to be something you did that you cringe with. I mean, I think back to the days when I was younger and my dad was, and, and still is, so proud of me. Um, he always wanted me to sing at church. Oh, did he really? Um, but I would sing to like a cassette tape, okay? Nice. Sometimes those tapes would get stuck or yeah. it would start with the wrong one or yeah. something. You'd have to just stand there while everyone is looking at you. Looking at you. At least they're pulling for you. Everyone is <laughs> I don't even know if they are. They're pulling for you cuz it's church and it's moms and stuff. At this party, no one was pulling for me. I think when I got older there was one and I still think back to it and if I ever I'm friends with her on Facebook, but I've never reached out to her. And if I ever saw her again, I would like try and duck. Um, But she had, it was a friend from church, my older church. She had just had her second or third baby. I'm not sure, but I didn't know that. Mm. I saw her at church and it had been a while. And so it was in that time where you're like supposed to greet people and stuff. So I'm greeting. I turn around and I see her and I'm like, oh, hey. So when are you having that baby? No, you did that? 
And she said, uh, I already had the baby. Oh. And I felt... Well, then why don't you let it out? <laughs> I felt so bad. I can't believe you did that. I shouldn't. But it was like, it was like she hadn't lost... She still looked <clears throat> pregnant. Right. You know, was and I knew least? she would. I knew she was expecting a baby. Right. I was right about all of right. those things. It was just that she. How had long had, had it? Been. How long had it been? It hadn't been long. Like not even a month. Okay, that's... and she was back at church. Mm. But still, I, I, I meant well. Yeah. But man, I never want to see her again. Guys have learned this. Most guys have learned. You never. I told. Ever I ask told. Her. Um, I think it was my mom or a friend of mine. I don't remember what you said one time where you were like, you never ask about the baby. No. Nope. Like, even if you think she's pregnant, yep. you don't even ask even if the baby is coming out. Yeah. If you are a, just... if you're an obstetrician, you don't even ask if she's pregnant. As a guy, you kind of like, you act surprised too. You're like, hey, what? look at that. You're having a baby. Well, this is crazy. Let's go ahead and deliver this thing. You never ask. You just don't. <laughs> you're nine months Yeah. Pregnant. I'm a surprised as you are right now. This is crazy. That could, that could backfire because then she could be like, oh, you just think I'm this big mm. on the regular? No. Mm, that's bad. <laughs> Gavin? I, Gavin, you know he's got plenty. Oh, okay? sure. Plenty. With the bum, uh, the bum mm, surgeries that he's yeah. had, had to actually go to high school with the bum pillow. That's a rough go. Yeah. I mean... Like, you deserve a crown That's in just in general cringing, especially because I had to do it, like, three times. Oh, at, like, three God. different schools. So, that it wasn't, like, rough. people who understood. Every time it was new people, you had to explain why you had, yeah. like, a little pillow. All right. So, I have a tail. I have a tail. Let's <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> And I cut. I lost it. <laughs> no, but I think the story that I just I hate thinking about is just yeah, always surrounded by like breaking up with a girlfriend or being broken up with by a girlfriend, mm. um, where like it was a surprise breakup, not a good surprise. Not did to you, her. Did you ever cry? <laughs> totally, cr- totally cried my eyes out. Yeah, like in front of them. I don't know if I'd start. I don't think I started crying until I left. Mm. And I remember she broke up and she started walking away, and I hit. A wall that was dumb. Yeah, like cringy when you look yeah. back at that. You're like, oh, why would you? Why'd you turn around and like punch a brick wall? Like that doesn't. It's hard to. You're not achieving. As a guy, much. it makes sense. No, it makes it, sense. Uh, no, you're right. In in the moment, 100 percent always will. And I remember that she broke up with me on like Halloween day, which was just uh, a bummer because you cause probably had a party. There's Halloween too. parties later that night, yeah. and so my uh, buddy and I were had, you, these, had a couples. No, outfit? not I, I. I had an outfit planned with a buddy of mine, oh. but it basically involved like bright green shirt. Uh, gold pants. Maybe that's why she broke up. Box with of Lucky Charms <laughs> carrying her out. Oh, uh, so yeah. ironically leaned Lucky into charm. the ginger thing. That checks out. And he was a ginger, so we had like Lucky Charm outfits. Oh, not it bad. Was, it was it was funny. Not bad. But so you know, you're just I'm walking around this party, and she's there, and I've got like tears in my eyes as I'm wearing like <laughs> these gold pants and carrying a box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> yeah. Like Aww. Brian, I think I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Aww, and just 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 such a Gavin. sad. Cringy little I get day. it, man. I get it. I did a six hour drive home listening to this. <laughs> Got broken up with a girl when your I went Rudy to visit Kerm her. Your hair yeah. blowing so, in the wind. It's so I hard for that stuff it. not to be your entire world. In yeah. that moment, yeah. a meaningless 16 year old to 20 year old, yeah. like the relationship ending, it's so hard for that not to mean the world. I drove up ends. to see this girl in uh, at FSU. She went to FSU and then uh, went up for the weekend and then she broke up with me. I was like, you could have saved me the trip. Like a phone call yeah, would have been bad. great. Uh, but then, so uh, yeah, so six hour drive up, get broken up with. Next day, six hour drive back and oh. just cranking the outfield in my Camaro Aww. and just tears. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> say it isn't so. Why? Maybe you know what? Maybe I should turn around and go back and no, see. No, no, no. Okay, no. Keep that's going. what we do. <laughs> yeah, you sit there and you try and think yeah. of how maybe to get it all back. Yeah, and I remember thinking that in my silly little head that you're yeah. like, I think that somehow this is going to resolve itself and we're going to be okay. Just and then at some point, you like it, it switches to then anger. It's like you're gonna, you just missed out on the best thing in your life. <laughs> you regret let, this. Yeah. Let me ask this. You'd be so sad. These I'm women that get... y'all are referring to, how yes. long did it take them to move on? Uh, mm-hmm. pff, minutes, probably. <laughs> like, she already yeah. had another yeah. guy so, in line. I knew most of them had like 
guys that they moved on to pretty quickly. Yeah, oh. taller like, guys. Like the yeah, uh, like oh. better looking. Dudes. Yeah, like the one girl who told me I didn't look like the guy like she should be dating. Uh, like <laughs> she, I think she. she yeah, she was getting into the sorority fraternity oh. life, and I had like How long hair and everything. With those guys? Yeah, and so she, Tall, I think she athletic. had her eyes on somebody else, and mm. was like, "Yeah, this is where I want to go in my life." So mm. yeah, I'm mm. sorry. Ouch. Ouch. Glad we could relive Boy, these Boy, this moments. was so much yeah. fun, Rock. <laughs> Thank you. I remember dating a girl and hearing that. from her friends at one point her talk about the crush she had on another, another guy. Yeah. Like, Aww. what in the world? Yeah. Have That's you ever been rough. broken up with from a friend? Like, the mm. friend broke up with you for them because no. they didn't want to do it? That happened to me once. Uh, that sounds way worse. Yeah, it was It was not good. I got broken up with over text. <laughs> that, that, yeah. was, that was less. That was soulless. Yeah, I would rather take a text now. It, it, yeah, if I had it all to do yeah. over again, like this texting thing's pretty great. You're like, hey, don't want to be with you anymore. Okay, thanks, no probs. Emoji. See ya. Yeah, done. Ghost. See it's you cool. Know? <laughs> oh yeah, nowadays I'd rather. Yeah, if you can ghost while you know, not having to see them at high school the next day, perfect. Absolutely. Oh, sounds fun. All right, well that is gonna do it for our aftercast and uh, pieces of our soul. Yep. Uh, at least for Gavin and me. <laughs> 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 uh, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Thanks for being a potty. Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.